Welcome back to the USA Friendship Quilt. We're working on Lesson 2, Preparing the Quilt and Adding Appliques. Now it's time to put the main map together. And this will be where you will put each of the individual state appliques. Now I've made this map up into five equal pieces. Then you can put that together like a jigsaw puzzle. And all you need to do is this will go against that. So we're going to just trim along the line. And you only have to trim where another piece is going to meet it. So we have this piece meeting underneath. And we'll have a piece on each side of these ones meeting, so let's trim that. And again, because these lines are so dark, if you don't get it quite on the line, it's okay, because you'll be able to see when you place the next piece. So let's get these two ready so I can show you how we'll put them together. And then you can put the rest of the map together in the same way. So you can see on piece four, I only needed to trim along this side. I don't need to worry about trimming the top because I can slide this right down over top of that, and now I have a match. Now I'm going to go ahead and tape these together. Like so. So there's part of our map put together. Now I'll go ahead and do the rest of the map and come back to you. Now we're ready. We've already got pieces four and five taped together. That was the lower south east United States and the northeast United States. Now we're going to put the midsection together and we want to line these up at the boundary line. So North Dakota and Minnesota should meet at the line. And then we have the rest of the states coming down and you'll see that Kansas is just slightly higher than Missouri. Once you get that lined up like that, Go ahead and tape that in place. Try to make sure you overlap those drawn lines so that your states will fit correctly. And again, I didn't trim this edge or this side or at the bottom because those were not a meeting place. The next portion that I'm going to join together will be the part with Texas. And you can see that I need to trim on this side so it meets here, and I need to trim around the top so it meets here. So now that we have this part trimmed out, we're going to go ahead and place it down against our map. We're going to line up against this edge along this edge and this edge and tape it in place. Now the last piece that we need to put together is the western states of California, Arizona, Washington, and what we're going to do on this one is just trim along this adjoining line so that we can join it up there. So now we have that piece trimmed out. 
we're going to lay it down against the rest of the map. We're going to line up so that it meets at the top border and it meets at the southern border, just like that. So basically we've just put together a, a, a jigsaw puzzle. And this is what we're going to use to lay out our applique pieces. So there's your map. Now I'm going to show you why I recommend a light colored background for this map. If you decided that you'd have liked to add a blue background, that's all well and good, but you can't see through this, which means you now have to transfer the map to your fabric with a light box or by taping it to the window and tracing it. And that's a lot of work. But it's your call. If you want a blue background or whatever color background you want, just know that you will have to do that. On the other hand, if you choose to use a lighter background, like this, Now you can see that you can see that map right through your fabric, which is a good thing because that means you don't have to trace anything and you're all ready to start to put your applique pieces down on your background piece. So now I have my background fabric pinned to the paper template underneath of the map. And I've set out the western states. Now I suggest starting with the western side of the United States because they made their states nice and big and it gets you into practice for placing your states. So the first thing we need to do is to start removing the paper background from your template. And then you're going to lay your piece within the boundary on your map, like so. Now don't press yet. Let's wait till we get them all in place. The next one we need is Utah. So it's easy to get the backing off. Just fold it at the corner and make sure you're getting the full paper, not just not just your template paper, but your paper from the applique as well, or the wonder under. If in a case like that, your, just the paper came off, but not the backing for your wonder under, the easy way to remove this is to take a straight pin and just scratch it across the surface. And that will reveal what's underneath. So we're going to put this in place. And let's get Idaho. Now most of the time you'll find that you'll have to use the pin to get the wonder under backing off because the template paper peels off a lot easier. 
but not a problem. So now we're going to put Idaho where it belongs. And you can see how they're all lining up really well. You want to make sure that the top of the state stays on the borderline between United States and Canada, say for example, or the oceans or Mexico. That gives your map a good shape. So now we're ready to do Washington. And I could see that, <coughs> excuse me, we'll be doing more scratching than peeling. And I have to thank the member who sent the cannabis leaves for the state of Washington. Now, if you have a situation like this, where you have some threads, make sure you clip those off before you press. This is probably the most time-consuming part, but it's fun to see it all come together. And I so again want to thank all of you who jumped right in and said, boy, I'd like to collect fabrics from all over the United States, and jumped in and said, I'll send some. So that's what makes this map so incredibly special. It's like a friendship map from people of our group who wanted to take part and so very much appreciated. Now you can also see that by when you trimmed it out by leaving just that little bit of white on the edge and not cutting right on the line that made it possible to make sure that we have everything just slightly overlapping and not leaving any gaps between our states. And that's the thing that you want to make sure of that when you get ready to press there's no gaps. For example here we have a gap, we need to move this down. Here we're okay. And now that we see that all our pieces are okay, don't rush this part. Make sure that they truly are covering all the edges. That's when you're going to take your iron 
and press them down. Set it flat down. Now right here, we had a shift. So I want to make sure I get that fixed before I go any further. And you should be using a dry iron And there's the first part of your map. Now you'll just continue on like that throughout the rest of your map until it's all covered. When you get to the northeast part of the country, you're going to really hate those states because some of them are minuscule in size. So this is what I'm going to suggest to you. Lay down what you can. For example, here's Maryland. And that kind of goes around a few states like that. So that's positioned well. Now let's find New Jersey. paper off the back of that one. Now let's lay it down. See how it fits. So, so far we're doing okay. Now we can put Pennsylvania down to make sure it covers it all. So let me, let's make sure before we press anything that we have total coverage. So I always lay down the larger states last because there's a little bit more fudge room with them. So if I lay Pennsylvania down like so, I'm along the New York border, I'm along the Maryland border, New Jersey, Delaware, Everything looks good, so let's press that now while the pressing's good. So we're in good shape there. Now, as we go up further, we have itty bitty states like. We have Connecticut right here. We have Rhode Island right there. So let's get those ready to go. Now, Connecticut seems really small, doesn't it? I'll put that right there. But when you look at that in comparison to Rhode Island, it's pretty big. So let's get Rhode Island out of here. This one's going to be fun to peel away.
So sometimes you even have to scratch the other paper. Okay. Now, you might want to take fabric glue and just barely touch it to the back side. And then I use my little forceps to hold on to it until I get it placed just right. And that little dab of glue will help to hold it in place. Well, maybe not. So as soon as you get it to the point that it looks good, press it. And that's my secret to doing the little states. Don't waste too much time between the time you lay them down until you press them. Because they're just going to move around on you. Because they're so little. They just don't want to cooperate. But take your time. And it will all work out. That looks good. Let's press that down. And when we're pressing, you'll notice I'm using a dry iron again. And I'm not sliding the iron back and forth. I am pressing straight down. That way I'm not moving my pieces around as I press. So continue on in that manner. Oh, and don't forget Alaska and Hawaii.